Um, so today's presentation is um, by, by uh, Pamela, who we've uh, been working with for uh, something like three years now, I think. Or uh, we've first of all we're involved with Pamela's research work with her masters, looking at social science questions and and uh, how people from the north of Costa Rica looked at the uh, the Great Green Macaw and conservation and and opportunities available to them. And then, um, like all uh, good research, that then fed into uh, into conservation action, and we've used that information to help develop strategies for working with local communities. And um, this is an area which, uh, uh, for me, is is really I've I've dabbled in it, but I personally don't have a great background in this area. Whereas I think I know something about the birds. Uh, so I interfere with the bird program a lot more than I do with Pamela and it's actually um, it's really great and for me because this is one where I, I simply say well Pamela you know the stuff tell me what we need to do and, and let's make that happen um, and I you know I, um, we want that across the organization and it's really great to work with Pamela in that way and Pamela has been a really amazing addition to the team and bringing uh, a big smile and, and uh, a lot of experience and and great, um, Bella's really great working with people and, and having sort of this, her own network and connections. Cause even before working with us, um, with the, and doing the research work, Pamela was involved with conservation work up in Sarapaki. So, um, so yeah, she's a really fantastic addition to the team. And, uh, it's exciting to have her present today about one of our major projects and, um, uh, which were, we're, taken a little while to get to and we're really excited that we've got this program rolling uh, and I think it's probably time I should not say any more before I spill the beans and I'll let Pamela tell us all about it. Hello everybody. Uh, first of all, thanks for your time. I'm happy to see uh, these familiar faces uh, even though we don't know uh, each other in person but I know you through Zoom <laughs> and it makes me feel uh, more comfortable because as you may know my first language is not English and sometimes I'm so I'm nervous when I'm doing these kind of facts but uh, well so if you have any question at the end of if I make some mistake that we and we, we didn't understand the idea please uh, let me know and I will explain it again um, I'm gonna share my screen here we are, let me see like this. Okay, perfect. Well, today uh, we are here to talk about communities, uh, to talk about communities that are uh, inside the Great Green Macau a breeding area in this case. Macau Recovery Network is currently working in these six uh, sites. We are working with three species, the scarlet macaw, the yellow nape Amazon, and also the great green macaw, which is the one species that we are going to talk uh, today. Uh, the great green macaw habitat is in the um, Caribbean lowlands of Costa Rica. And here you can see on the map that we are currently working in Boca Tapada and Pangola. Um, today we are going to talk about Boca Tapada. When Hassan was saying, when uh, um, I was doing my master's degree thesis, I was living in Boca Tapada. I lived there for many um, months. And one day I was um, washing my hair at the shower. And through the window, I saw a pair of red ring macaws. I mean, the red ring macaws are critically endangered. And I had the opportunity to saw this pair through the window of uh, my house. So in that moment, I really realized how important is Boca Tapada and this area for the red wing macaws and how um, not common, but, but it's in a place where you can see them often in during the breeding um, season. So that day, something changed in my mind and I really understand how important are the conservation efforts in this area. And I have to admit that the second thought that I thought uh, that I had that day was how important is some time to bring binoculars to the shower also. 
This is Bocatapa. This is how Bocatapa looks like. It's a rural community in the north side of Costa Rica. With, um, you can see the kind of road that you, that you see in, in the town. If you are a neighbor in Bocatapada and you want to go to the supermarket, you have to take a bus for two hours. So it's not that easy. There is not, um, there are not facilities in the area. There are, um, there is internet, but it's not a good connection. So life in the area is difficult. Also, um, you can find uh, cattle fields uh, in the community and also pineapple plantation. But also you can find, as you can see and in the bottom of the picture, an amazing mountain well uh, conserved. We, the Macar Recovery Network, have been uh, working in Bocatapada since uh, 2018. And we the, do this work uh, through volunteers. We had a list, we have a list of nests. And we normally go to these nests and check how are the pairs, um, the great green macaw pairs doing during the breeding season. And we do, do all this work through volunteers, as I said. But in 2020, something major happened and it's something that affected us, um, it, our, our life in general. And we had a lack of volunteers coming to uh, Costa Rica in, during 2020 and 2021. And um, this is related to the restriction for the COVID-19. Also, in the community in Boca Tapada, many people lost their jobs related to tourism. And we realized that, that um, women were the ones that were uh, more affected. So we saw these two opportunities or these two issues. We don't have volunteers for going to monitor the nest and also people in the community is having bad times. And we merge these two issues in a solution. And that is uh, how we uh, create the Women Render Project. So the Women Render Project um, starts with 10 ladies from Boca Tapa. All of them uh, lost their job related to tourism because of the pandemic. And thanks to a funder, a Costa Rican funder, we were able to train these ladies and uh, let them or, or given them the tools for going to the nest and monitor the great green Macau um, seasonal behavior. So these are the latest. We, we have the youngest is uh, 19 years old and the oldest is 63 years old so they came from different uh, backgrounds uh, all of them are from from Bocatapa. as i said uh, we train them for monitoring the nest we give them um, binoculars and um, some data sheets that they can take uh, the, the data and at the end of three months of uh, working we had we got some results we got uh, we 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 have able to uh, monitor 10 trees or 10 cavities on the trees. As you may know, the great green macaw normally nest in cavities on the trees. So we were able to check 10 trees. We also, um, of those trees, only three were actually nest. Two of them are the, the normal trees that we already had in our uh, data list. And one of them is a new nest for Macquarie Recovery Network. So the women ranger discovered, in a way, one new nest for, for the Macquarie Recovery Network. Also, we had data of seven observation points, and we were able to rescue one chick. Um, and this is long story short, uh, when the chicks uh, fledge, they mm, sometimes get hair. And this is the case of this one, that she got hair when he fledged and thanks to the relation between the women ranger and the landowner they call us and we take this uh, animal to the um, to a rescue center so this is our main results for the first three uh, months uh, of the women ranger project but the story doesn't end there 
um, we gave them these certificates in, in, you know, as a way to, to say thank you for all the effort that they did. Also, I have to clarify that uh, the rangers get an income, an economical income for doing this, this monitoring with us. When the, this project finished, um, Macquarie Recovery Network, the team, we start talking and, and looking for a way to continue the, the project with them. And we were having this conversation, the women rangers didn't know that. And then one day, this lady, one of the youngest, Maria Elena, she came to me with the idea of become volunteer for MRN. So all these process that the rangers um, had going through with the monitoring of the nest, increase awareness uh, on, on them of how important is the habitat for the great green Macau. And they wanted to become volunteers for us and organize one reforestation event. So they were saying, we want to do something else. We, we want to uh, plant some trees for, for the Macaus. So the team, the MRN team, decided to take this idea, um, becoming more, become this, to take this idea and become it um, something more organized. And this is how we start, or we go further from a reforestation ever or plant some trees. That was the idea that Marielena had. And we go further and we decide to um, establish a restoration project with the women in this restoration project we have some goals one of them is uh, to train the rangers in how to do reforestation how to monitor reforestation how to handle uh, managing a nursery we also want to uh, build a nursery our goal is to plant 6,000 trees in two years and also educate 200 kids in two years. We already um, start with this project and the, 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 we already start with this project and at the moment we are uh, making connection with different partners. And it's not just uh, MRN, it's something else. It's the women rangers are the one who are leading this project, are the one who are making the connection and she and they um, are becoming a point of reference in the community. So at the moment we are working with other NGOs, with other neighbors, with landowners, with uh, hotels, with uh, private reserves, and also with the local government. But in all these processes, I mean, when I have to, when we have to talk with a hotel about, for example, a reforestation event, the rangers are there with us and they are the one who set the rules. We are just uh, being with them during the process, but they are the ones who are leading this uh, process of conservation. In this picture, for example, is a meeting that we had in Boca Tapada with the local government. This land that you can see, uh, this lot that you can see um, is a public property, is from the local government and nobody is using it. So the women ranger had the idea to build a nursery in that land. We made the connection. We are, we in this moment, we are the bridge between many organization and the rangers. We make the connections and we set this meeting with local, uh, with local, with the local government. There are some, this, this lady, I guess, is the, the, I don't know if in English is this the word, the word, the by mayor. It's like just, uh, it's not the mayor, it's the second one. So um, we are talking with, with the local government. We are a one step of signing the agreement for building the nursery in this lot. It's public land and it will, um, this agreement will last two years and the women rangers are the one who will um, manage the nursery, the tree nursery that we wanna develop there. We are having training, as you know, or here in Costa Rica, the situation with the pandemic uh, is not the best. We are not go, we are not going back to normality. So we're still having virtual training with them. So this is a picture of one of our session, sessions. I met them uh, every day at 3 p.m. So today in a couple of hours, I have to meet them. 
and we have been um, learning about tree nursery managing, about how to do a reforestation even, and also uh, some th topics related to education, because as I already mentioned, 200 kids will be educated through the women range. Also, we are having some field trips. We went to Abuela Ecologica Tree Nursery, which is an NGO that already has a, a nursery. And they explained with the rangers how are they doing their work. We joined the Abuela Ecologica um, Foundation in one reforestation. In this one, this picture that you can see is Carmen planting one of the tree uh, for the Abuela Ecologica. We learned a lot about the process and also um, and something that is very important for us is that um, the rangers um, barely go to the school or high school. So sometimes they feel that maybe they are not that ready for this. But in this moment when they saw um, this uh, lady who actually just go to school, they can see in this lady the, the one that managed uh, the Abuela Ecologica Nursery, like a hope, you know, that if she can do it, I can do it too. And also we have this uh, help from a car recovery network that's gonna give us the tools to um, do all the nursery manage managing. So at the end for us, this um, project is important and also because, because it is uh, people-centered. Our project is people-centered and we hope that we uh, can get more connections and the women render be, uh, become the main center of this connection with other people from communities, other people that uh, have uh, similar ideas. And um, in the outreach program, we really want this project to become a MACO recovery network. So this is our story. Oh, oh my God. Well, and that's it. That's the end. <laughs> Sorry. <Yeah. laughs> Fantastic. Thank you, Pamela. That's really, really great.